We have chickens, guys. We just picked up chickens from the post office. And we also have turkeys. Turkeys are here. We are just starting the busy season here on our homestead. Bernice, good morning, Bernice. Currently, this is the most animals we've ever had at one time. 200 chickens and 10 pigs. And today, we're supposed to get more chickens and turkeys. Hey, pig. Cause I'm the snack man. Yeah, I'm the snack man. We're gonna be using this turkey shelter again this year, guys. We still have a month left with these chickens and I continue to make my way up the mountain here. Down there is where we're running the coonies and the pigs and the egg layers and we need to spread out a little bit more. getting close to blackberry season. I haven't got around to making them a trough, so I've been pouring the feed on the ground and they've been eating it just fine. I don't feel like they're wasting it either. If anything, this batch up here is eating more clover and grass because I am pouring their feed on the ground. So after the hatchery sends you an email that the chickens have been shipped. The chickens should arrive at the post office the next day or the next day after that. They're good for anywhere from 24 to 48 hours after they, after they are hatched. And then on this half, you have the turkeys and then a little bit more uh, egg layers, I mean uh, meat birds, and they're all kind of divided up. Now the post office will call you usually super early in the morning before you even wake up, you gotta have feed ready, water ready, a, a brooder space ready, heat lamp ready, and then you can go pick up these chicks and then bring them back. We have meat chickens in here also. We just put them in here. These guys are four weeks old. We had to take those ones out of the brooder because I knew these guys were coming today. For their brooder space, we like using these flake pine shavings. To clean these brooders, now this folds down, and then you can just wipe away some of this bedding. The floor here has some vinyl flooring that I added, and this makes it everything super slick and easier for when you clean everything. So I've just been putting a good layer in here. This is about half the bag, and that should last the entire four weeks, three to four weeks that they're in here. We have so many in-ground bees. Look at these things, guys. This is crazy. Look at these bees. They just bury in there, and there's a, probably a huge nest down underground. They look like carpenter bees. They don't, they don't really bother us. They're just kind of flying around right there. I don't, I don't want them there. We have a broody hen in here. We don't have broody hens very often, but we have one right now. We're, we're trying to let her, hopefully she'll lay some eggs and baby chicks for us. Let's see, let's want to see what's underneath here. It's all right, let's see what you got. There's probably like two dozen eggs down there. I don't see any babies. It's all right. I'm letting you be, I'm letting you hatch them. Hopefully you'll hatch some baby chicks for us. We're gonna separate the turkeys. We have 15 turkeys. And then 40 meat chickens in this one. There's apple cider vinegar here, maybe a cap full, and water. And then it's best to count them, uh, just to make sure, see how much, how many you have, because it's pretty typical that the hatchery will uh, send you extras, maybe one or two, because it is also pretty common to lose a few during transit. You might lose one, you might lose three, or you might not lose any. I just hold them like this, 
with my thumb, I just push their beak down into the water. They're pretty tiny. Oh, they're asleep. <laughs> I guess they're warm enough. The turkeys we got this year are giant white turkeys from McMurray Hatchery. So last year we raised the bronze breasted turkeys and I figured we'll try these ones. You know, to be honest, like the bronze breasted, they were pretty much like a wild turkey. So they would definitely fly away if I really let them. And they did, they just had their way with our property and would just roam around. So we're gonna try these ones. Maybe these guys will stay in. And also the first week that we raised those bronze turkeys, we lost half of them. So the thing about uh, turkeys, when you order them on a website like McMurray Hatchery, is you, there's a limit. You, you have to buy 15, usually. Uh, and then so last year we, ate, we actually lost half of them uh, the first week. So hopefully we'll have better luck and keep all of these because we do plan on selling some of these uh, for Thanksgiving. These are our turkeys. We have 16. McMurray sent us one more extra. They really look like uh, Cornish cross chickens, the way that their color is. But if you notice, they have a little bump on their, just above their beak. And they have taller, taller legs than the Cornish crosses. These turkeys are the Cornish crosses of turkeys. Some chick starter feed, a little bit higher protein and just regular broiler feed when they get a little older. These chickens should be good to go. We'll put the heat lamp on them still, even though it's, it's getting warmer out, but nighttime's kind of cold. Now for the turkeys, we use turkey starter feed. This is chicken starter so you can see that this is a little bit um, lighter this is a little bit darker this has about 26 percent protein i think we're looking at about 20. come on guy put the heat lamp on these guys as well Cooking some meat today. We have a roast here. Not sure exactly what kind of meat or kind of cut that is. I know it's beef. We're doing 225. This should be done in about seven hours. Before we load up this bag of feed, we have good news. Our homesteading is punk rock t-shirts are in the shop because I cannot think of anything more punk rock. You could check out our bonfire shop. So I'll leave the link down below so you can purchase your own. So this is about 300 pounds of pig feed in a tote. This was a thousand pounds, but we've been using it. And I need to put it somewhere else. I don't feel like it's very beneficial of it in here. It's not very efficient. Our little barn out there and right in the middle, pretty much in the middle of our property is further out there. And that's, you know, where we're always at. That's where the feed should be. That's where the water should be. So I want to move that. I got two barrels out there that we use for our pigs that are empty. So we need to fill that up with this feed. And then now we have this wench hooked up. This is why we wanted an electric wench also. Hoist up a bag of feed. go down much.
In a perfect world, this would be a roll-up door and I could just back in further right up to those barrels. Now this is the Kuni Kuni feed from New Country Organics. And since it's Kuni Kuni feed, it lasts a little bit longer than if we're feeding these for our feeder pigs. Probably three times as long it'll last. 55 gallon barrel is equivalent to six 50 pound bags of feed. Little piglets out. I see you. I see you. Oh no. <laughs> I see how it is. This same one, guys. It keeps getting out. It's gone out before. Same one. Just only one. The same one. Little troublemakers. There's some more feed here. Here you go. Here you go. Here you go. Here you go. The big one. This is the big one. Just in time for dinner. Let's see how this beef turned out. We need a meat slicer. Yeah. Wow. 100% grass fed. That was one of our steers that we butchered. That's good. <laughs>